social distancing. Um, Wednesday night, we're continuing our study of Revelation. I believe we're in chapter 11, so at 7 p.m. Wednesday night. Um, Sunday school is starting in September for all ages at 9 a.m. Right now, if you need nursery, you have to staff it yourself. We don't have staffed nursery right now, but coming in September, we will have staffed nursery. Um, And then back to school bash, we're still collecting donations for that. So mark on your envelope, back to school bash, put it in the basket at the front with your tithe, and then um, it helps out our kids in the community to start out the school year, even though that's a little iffy right now, too. So do you want a bless offering? Do you have something to say? Oh, yes, we need towels. We're in need of donations of towels to put behind the decorations here in the sanctuary to... um, help with the echo and then okay. so we'll go ahead and bless the offering remember you give on the way out there's a basket there you can give on the way in or out or you can give online uh, we know things are very different but we still have to support our church amen, amen. Uh, so we want to make sure we do that uh, Pastor, it's always before you pray this Wednesday night we also start back with our youth and children's classes this Wednesday night okay. as well as the adult Bible study okay. yeah. And people say, well, why aren't you going ahead and starting everything? Because we're still in chaos back here trying to get everything in order. But we're working on it and uh, uh, still got people working on decorations for the church. And and it's coming. Just bear with us as we work through all that. But uh, remember to give and bless your church uh, and your community. How many believe that 
With everything going on in the world right now, this is a golden opportunity for the church to rise up. Amen. 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 Father, I thank you today for who you are, for all you do. I thank you that we can join together today in this beautiful building that you've supplied for us, Father. Father, we give you all the praise and all the glory. Bless every dollar that comes in that it would be used for your honor and your glory. And bless those that give, Father, that they would be blessed in all that they do. In your precious and holy name, amen. Let's worship.
looking out here and I'm telling you I have a disappointed heart. Who's going through something right now? Who's going through COVID-19 right now? If that ain't a chain, I don't know what is. We're going to do the chorus again. And I challenge you, step out, step out, break the chain. today because you are the chain breaker. We praise you today because you are our King and our Lord and our friend. God, we give you all the glory today, all the glory. Yes. Father, I pray right now that before we leave here today, chains will be broken. For those that are watching on the internet or that will watch, Father, I pray that chains will be broken. I pray that we receive from your word today what you have for us. In your precious and holy name. And all God's people said. Amen. 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 Great job worship team. As always. Overcoming adversity. Glory, glory, glory. Can you hear me all right? Everybody hear me all right? Good deal. It's, it's a different setup. So it's unique. But God is good. Amen. How many... Uh, Last week, we were thankful. How many have more to be thankful for this week than you did last week? Amen. I see some people going, amen, and I am the same way. I am thankful for what God uh, did. I have to tell you, um, I got a message this morning from a friend of mine in Tennessee. Got encouraging words from people here in the church last night, uh, which was such a blessing. Uh, but I got a message. You know what, would anybody in this room, do, you don't have to answer, but if you believed in your heart he was returning today, would you do something different? Then do it. If there's somebody you need to share Jesus with, call them this afternoon and share Jesus. Because we don't know, it may be 20 years, it may be whenever, we don't know, but we do know that he is returning. So, I'm going to preach this morning. Like, I believe Christ is returning this afternoon. Can we give him praise one more time? And I'm going to start out uh, just with Scripture and then break down why we're here and, and what God showed me through this. 
Uh, so turn with me, if you will, to Luke chapter 22. Luke chapter 22. I'm going to read you about four verses of Scripture. Luke chapter 22. We'll begin with verse 31. And when you have it, you can stand for the reading of God's Word. Thank you for being here and being faithful. Pretty crowd today. Good looking folks out here today. We uh, appreciate you being here online. I don't have my own line, so I don't know. Uh, hopefully they can hear there. Miss Wendy will keep up with that and make sure that, because sometimes they say they can't hear, but we, uh, we can adjust, hopefully. Beginning with verse 31 of Luke 22. And the Lord said, Simon, Simon, behold, Satan hath desired to have you, that he may sift you as wheat. But I prayed for thee that thy faith faileth not, and when thou art converted, strengthen thy brethren. And he said unto him, Lord, I am ready to go with thee both into prison and to death. And he said, I tell thee, Peter, before the rooster shall crow this day, that thou shalt deny me three times, that thou even knowest me. Father, bless our time in the word. Lord, don't let me do anything that wouldn't honor you. We give you honor and praise in your precious name. Amen. You can be seated. Uh, if you know this scripture, I could preach a hundred messages out of this scripture, probably literally out of these four verses of scripture, you could preach so much. Uh, but let's look at this together. And I'm going to say this to you before we start. So don't turn me off when you hear me say this. We're going to cut a little bit, but we will heal from the cutting. God will heal us before the service is over if we listen to his word. But there's going to be, if, if you're like me, there might be a little bit of cutting today. Maybe you're not like me, but if you are, uh, God gave me this last Sunday morning early. And, and I've been chewing all week and there's been some cutting going on. Uh, but there was the last supper they were there. Jesus is telling them that he's about to be betrayed, right? Jesus is telling them, I'm about to be betrayed. I've got to go. I've got to do these things. And then he says to Simon Peter, I'm going to skip to this point. He says to Simon Peter, look, behold, Satan has desired. That word desired is, in, in, is an important word because if you're reading in the King James, it says desired. But if you look it up in the original Greek language, or the original yeah, Greek language, here's what it it says, Satan asked for you. Satan asked to be able to come after you. Satan asked God to be able to come after you. If you look it up, that's actually how that word desired you breaks down. And then Jesus said, but I prayed for you. He desired to get you. He asked that he could sift you like wheat. I mean, remember the Old Testament Job. Satan went after Job, and here he's going after Peter. And he literally says, Satan desired, he asked for you, that he might sift you like wheat for you. But when you turn back, Jesus told Peter, I prayed for you, but when you turn back. In other words, he said, Peter, even though I'm praying for you, Satan's going to get you. Now, I'm not giving Satan credit here at all, but I do want us to understand this. We are not above an attack of the enemy. Do not let the enemy or anyone else tell you that you are greater than an attack because attacks come to all of us. Jesus told Peter on this church, on your statement of faith, I will build the church. The gates of hell shall not prevail against it. And then he turns and he says to Peter, I have prayed that your faith would not fail, but yet it's going to. And I'm thinking, and we're seeing across the country churches failing and pastors and, and things going. And I'm like, God. And he said, when they return, and they will. And I'm thinking, what a beautiful... You could preach right there. You could preach a message right there. I'm not going to, but you could. But he said, when you turn back, strengthen your brothers. Use what you've gone through to help others. To help others. And if we remember Peter, Peter denies Christ three times. He, 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 then he goes back to fishing. He's kind of in a bad place. But then in the book of Acts, the Peter jumps up and he took everything he knows and begins to strengthen others, right? The first thing he does is he said, this is not, these men are not drunk. This is not what you suppose. Yet this is what Joel prophesied about. And he began to strengthen others because of the things he went through. Let me move on. Could you imagine Jesus saying to you, 
I'm praying for you, but you may fail. Don't ever get in your head that we're above an attack. It's not saying you'll fall to an attack, but it is saying that you could be attacked. Let me move on. Last Sunday, God woke me up and he brought this scripture to mind. This week, Mary Lee and Mark Scott have both confirmed things that God has showed me this week in their teaching, excellent teaching Wednesday night and Friday night, excellent, or Thursday night and Friday night, excellent, excellent teaching. And then he says, Peter was easy prey is what the Lord told me. He was easy prey, handpicked to be prey. How many have ever thought of yourself as easy prey? Have you? I haven't. I've always thought, you know what? I, I literally have always thought, you know what? I have the Holy Ghost. I'm anointed. I, I, I'm literally sanctified, saved, filled with the Holy Ghost. And, and I have not looked at myself as easy prey. But, but God told me this week, he said, Peter was easy prey. I said, now wait a minute. Peter was full of passion to preach the gospel. Peter was the guy that always jumped up and he said, yes. And when you are full of passion to reach a lost and dying world, you become easy prey if you're not careful. And he said, today the church... My church in America has become easy prey. And I said, easy prey? Lord, what are you talking about? And I know some of you this may not apply to. But he said Peter's passion was what made him easy prey. Let me show you some scripture. We could use many, many different examples. This is just an example. Matthew 16, 21 through 23 from that time forth began Jesus to show unto his disciples how that they must go to Jerusalem and suffer many things of the elders and chief priests and scribes and to be killed and to be raised again the third day. Then Peter took him aside and began to rebuke him. Jesus said, I have to go die to save Israel. And Peter took him aside and rebuked him. Because Peter did not want Jesus to die on Calvary. Peter wanted Jesus to become the king right here, right now. He wanted the country of Israel, if you will, his patriotism for one thing, became more glorified than hearing what God's word said to him. Jesus, the Messiah, spoke to Peter in verse 21 and 22, and he, or in verse 21, and he literally said to him, I have to go die. And Peter rebuked him. This is one spot where there's easy prey. We want so desperately to be what's going on in the world. We want to, to take a lead and a charge. And we want to make sure that, that we are patriots to the end. But I'm going to say this real quick. If your patriotism contradicts God's word, it makes you easy prey for the enemy. I know it's going to cut a little. We'll get there, though. Somebody else say amen. Make me feel a little better here. <laughs> he, then Peter took him aside, began to rebuke him, saying, Be it far from thee, Lord, that this shall not be unto thee. But he turned and said unto Peter, Get thee behind me, Satan. Thou art an offense unto me, for thou savorest not the things that be of God, but those that be of men. Jesus said, I must go and suffer. And Peter rebuked him because he wanted what the flesh wanted. Now let me make this clear. There have been times, and God has shown me this week, that I've wanted so desperately, Sterling, what the flesh wanted. I've wanted so desperately to get even. I've wanted so desperately to do this or that. And the Holy Spirit said, what would my word say? What would my word say? And then when you begin to do this, if, mm, I'll get there in a minute, we'll go. Think about this. Peter didn't want Jesus to die. He wanted him to be what he wanted him to be. How many times have I wanted God to do it my way instead of his way? How many times have I nudged God in the direction that does contradicts His Word? Because I wanted it done here and now. I wanted it done my way. And I'll be honest with you. I can't find anywhere, anywhere in Scripture, where God said for me to fight for my freedoms. 
The only time I hear that God would tell me to fight for my freedom is if they tell me I can't preach the gospel and they've not said that. Now, I can justify and say they say I can't use my church building. I have to use a mask. I can't do this. But they've never stopped me one time from preaching the gospel. Miss Faye, I watched her Saturday stand at the point and preach the gospel standing down here on a street corner. They have never told me I can't. And if they do, then I will fight for that. But if I make sure that whatever I do lines up with God's word first, then I will not be easy prey for the enemy to pick me off. I'm going to move on. But I've heard good Christian people like Peter was, say, paraphrasing things like this. Let's riot against the rioters in the name of Jesus. That contradicts God's word to love people. I was not called to attack our governor or our congressman. Because God said, my job is to love them and pray for them that come against you. Every morning this week, Brother Mark Scott, and you may be the only one that agrees with me and you may not. But every week about 4 o'clock, the dog has started barking to go out. And Wendy's upset because that's her dog and she has to take him out. And I'm sitting here and I'm waking up and I'm beginning to pray. And the first thing God puts on my heart is to pray for those that I would consider against the church of Jesus Christ in America. And the first thing he has done this week, every day as he has called me to pray for those that are coming against the church and the government. He has never. But see, here's the problem. My passion of being an American has literally come to a point to where I might be like Peter and ignore God's word to see God move in a way that I want him to move. Does that cut anybody other than me? Don't lift your hand, but kind of cut me this week. Huh? And he did this right before I preached last week. <laughs> John 18, 10 and 11. Then Simon Peter, having a sword, drew it and smote the high priest's servant and cut off his right ear. The servant's name was Malchus. Then said Jesus unto Peter, Put up thy sword into thy sheath. The cup which my father hath given me, shall I not drink it? Red flag. Jesus never told him to swing that sword. Peter jumped out of the boat with faith, but then he got his eyes on the world. And I'm beginning to look. And I'm just using Peter. There's so many more. We could talk about John when he was in jail. We could talk about literally our lives. But I begin to look back over the last few weeks and months of my life. And even longer than that. And I begin to see where I made decisions based on what I wanted God to do. Rather than what God's word said to do. And here's what I found about Peter. Jesus said, Satan called you out. He asked for you. Why? Because you have so much passion that God has literally given you a mission. And Peter, he said, you're going to build the church. You're literally on your testimony, however you want to add that in or put it in there. You're going to build the church. Can I say this to somebody today? Your passion to see God move in the day that we live. He placed you here at this moment in time. He placed you right here at this season. You were born exactly at the right moment, at the right time to be here in the world that we live in today. And when he did that, he called you and he gave you a passion. And he saved you and he sanctified you and he filled you with the Holy Ghost. But the enemy said, let me at him. Because I can find something they're passionate about and I can turn it on them. And I'll make easy prey out of them. He was an easy target. I have a video I'm not going to show you, but maybe you've seen it, of gazelles in a field and two of them begin to fight. And they're fighting. And the people around are talking. 
And the other gazelles are watching the fight. And in the distance, you don't notice it, but through the tall grass, the grass is moving. And you don't notice it, but all of a sudden, all the gazelles begin to scatter. And the two that are fighting are still fighting. And the thing that's coming through the grass is like a roaring lion, seeking whom he may devour. So let me just say this. I watched that video a hundred times this week. I got it. I'm not going to show it because it might be too graphic for you. But reality says this. They were so caught up in their little fight that the enemy came in charging and ripped one of them to shreds. And he never moved from where he was. He was an easy prey for the enemy to attack. And I'm thinking, my God. I'm a pastor, shouldn't you protect me? He said, I prayed for Peter. But Peter was easy prey. Because we get so caught up, the word said, in things of the world. That we become easy prey for Satan. So much passion, so much heart. And Satan asked to sift him. I've been looking at my own life. Where do I draw the line? What movie would I watch that has a little bit of cussing in it? That has a little bit of this or a little bit of that? What would I allow in my life that would open the door because I think? What would God say about a little leaven? What would, and if we truly are in the last days, and even if we aren't, everyone in this room is in your last days on this earth. Because if you live another 70 years, glory be to God, I hope you do. But that's still the last days. What would I allow to tear into me? What would I do that would open and expose? So that the enemy sits back and grins and goes, I want that one. He's easy prey. How many fights are we fighting that make no difference to the kingdom of God whatsoever? How many fights are we fighting that makes no difference to the kingdom of God whatsoever? How many fights are God's people churning in and chewing on and meditating on and at the end of the day the kingdom of God is suffering violence and it's being destroyed and the enemy like a roaring lion says I will get them if you give me a chance because they're easy pickings all right ready to heal somebody say amen right yeah. The church is tired, pandemics, riots, masks, no masks, vaccines, cashless society, mark of the beast. All these things that we should be concerned with but not focused on. It makes us easy prey for Satan. I know this is an offensive message to some. And I understand it, believe me. I wrote nine pages of notes in 15 minutes. You know why? Because I have chewed on it all week long. Because things I want God to do is not what God wants to do. And it doesn't line up with his word. I'm moving on. Jesus told Peter, this is my word. And Peter said, I don't think so. Jesus said, come to me. And Peter was ready. Are we ready to move forward no matter what? I didn't come to give Satan glory today, but to warn you, to warn you what God has warned me about all week. You're tired, you're passionate, you're ready to see America rise up. You're ready to see this and that and this and that, but forget what God's will is in the process is not what we are to do. It is not my place to tell God how to run his business. It is my place to follow obediently his rules. When I get paid twice a month,
They take tithes out. I mean, they take taxes out, not tithes. I pay them myself. But they take taxes out of my check. Because God said, Jesus said, Give unto Caesar what is Caesar's, and render unto God what is God's. i got to move. I'm going to skip some of this on purpose. Please hear my heart this morning. You are called of God. You are placed here in potentially some of the worst conditions that we've seen in our lifetimes. And God said, Mary Lee, Diana, Mike, Sterling, Wendy, Tim, I placed you right here because I believe in you. I believe you can make a difference. But Satan is out to get you. I'm praying for you, but he's out to get you. He gave you a mission. Think about where you're at right now. I'm trying to hurry, but I want to get the point across and I don't want to miss it. Think about where you're at in time right now. I got a text the other day that said, in history, you're right where you're supposed to be at this time. That might have been weird to some, but it made me smile all over. Because you know what? The mess that is going on around us, God trusted us with it. God trusted you and me with what's going on. Because he knew through the fear we'd keep moving. He knew through the anxiety we'd press on. He knew that we could literally put our focus on Jesus Christ and on the kingdom of God. And that we could trudge forward. And that we would be in the middle of the pack when God began or when the enemy began to move. We wouldn't be a straggler out there fussing and fighting about everything. He understood. All right, you ready? Satan sees red flags, red flags, fighting among ourselves. Come on, guys, don't fight battles that aren't worth fighting. Keep your eyes on Jesus. The kingdom's what matters. The kingdom's what matters. The kingdom's what matters. Some of us pastors want to grow a church so bad that we forget that it's about God, not us. Truth. We get so caught up in seeing what the next number will be And when the Lord says to you, what if you never get to the number you want, but when you stand before me, there'll be a line of people in that community that were touched by your ministry. What's more important? And I try to justify that, right, by saying, well, if we can fill the building. God said, I didn't ask you to fill the building. I asked you to preach the gospel. I ask you to grow disciples. I didn't ask you to do this or that. I didn't ask you to fight about a mask. I ask you to preach the gospel. I got to go. Satan like a roaring lion seeking whom he can devour, whom he may prey on. Who's he going to prey on? Those of us that are so passionate about everything. We sit in our living rooms and we read a story online and we weep like a baby. And then later we find out the story was 11 years ago. And we share things and we share things. And God said, don't do that. I got to go. He said, guard your heart for it is the wellspring of life. Guard your heart for it is the wellspring of life. You are called to carry the gospel right now. Not just in ACC, but all over. So here's our steps. Here's where we're getting to. You ready? Number one, do not make decisions without confronting God's word. Period. Period. 
Period. If you do not want to be easy prey for the enemy, do not make a decision until you check it with God's word. And if you're checking it with a, a verse that lines up for a battle that Israel fought 30,000 years ago, but it does not line up with the context of God's word, walk away from that. If it does not line up with God's word and you continue to push it, you literally are becoming easy prey for the enemy. So many things I'd like to have said this week. God said, what's my word say about it? Back. <laughs> Moving on. Number one. If you don't want to be easy, pray. Get in God's word and follow it. Follow it. Follow it. Some of you know I've been in a battle lately. And God has said, I want you silent. And he took me to the scripture that said Jesus didn't open his mouth. And that's the only scripture he's given me. And that's where I'm at. i got to move. Number two, stop gossip before it starts. Stop fighting before it starts. Stop the things that are going on before they start. Stop it before it starts. Run everything by the character of the Word of God. Number two, pray, 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 pray. If Jesus is the example in the garden, he prayed, God, I don't want to do this. This is not what I want to do. But what I want more than anything is your will in my life. How often do we pray, God, heal this or heal that, and not end that prayer with, but God, nevertheless, your will be done, not my will. God, I want this job. God, I want this. God, I want that. God, I want that. And then according to your word, you say you want to bless me. That's absolutely right. But if this is not your will for my life at this moment in time, then I submit my will to your will. And the only way you will find that is if you are praying and in the word of God. And then you don't become easy. Pray, P-R-E-Y. Number three. Listen to the Holy Spirit. He is here to guide you. He is here to help you. He is here to keep you from becoming prey. Listen to the Holy Spirit. Before you let your passion and emotions guide you down a path that is not of God. Listen to what the Holy Spirit is saying to you. Because if I make you any promise at all, he will speak to you if you will listen. And if he says don't move, then just stand there and wait. But you don't understand the lion's coming at me wide open. If he said stand there, just wait. He's got something that will take the lion out. Just trust him. Preaching longer than normal. You shouldn't have put me back in the building, right? Number four, don't forsake the assembling of the saints here or online or somewhere. I know it's summertime and I understand that, but if you can gather together, and that's the one thing we talked about when we first went online only is gather around your coffee table. Don't say, I'll catch it later. And I know preachers are saying, we'll catch it when you can. And believe me, I hope you do. But make sure that you are together with other believers. I listened to preachers this morning before I came here. I got up early and listened to other pastors. I listened to you Thursday night. I listened to Mark every Friday night. Why? Because I need to be fed. I need to hear what God is speaking, not just to me, but to others. And the Holy Spirit will speak to us if we will listen. And that's whether you're field tongue talking or not. I pray that you are. I pray that you always are. And number five, last one. Don't forget God's ordinances. In hard times, it's easy not to tithe, it's easy not to serve. It's easy not to pray. It's easy not to take communion. Well, I wish my church would have communion. You have a home. Men, you are the priest of your household. 
Next time mama's going to the grocery store, say, pick us up a bottle of grape juice and some pita bread. Because in the morning, we're going to take communion together. Well, why would I do that? Well, here's what I know. That very first Passover, when they came out of Egypt, and that's the one the communion represents. Psalms tells me there were 600,000 men plus women and children that came out of Egypt and there was none feeble among them. If for no other reason than for your help, stop your family and take some communion. If nothing else but for the peace of your own mind and your own heart, don't forsake. And I didn't have this one in my list till I got a call this week that said, Pastor, I've never been baptized. As soon as we can get back, will you baptize me? You better believe it. That's an ordinance of God. You better believe it. You better believe it. I'll baptize you. Number one, make decisions based only on what God's word says, period. Do not contradict God's word. Do not take a verse of scripture out of context to make it fit where you're at. How do I say that? Let me give you the simple one. Love God, love people. If what your decision you're about to make doesn't love God and people, it's not of God. Any amens anywhere? <laughs> Increase your prayer life. Find a way. You find a way to do everything, right? That's what God told me. You find a way to do everything else you want to do. Why can't you increase your prayer life? I hate getting up at 4 o'clock in the morning. Because I'm not in bed before 1. I hate it. But my day is so much better when I spend that hour with him between 4 and 5. And if I doze back off at 5, the sleep I get from 5 to 6 before the alarm get off is almost better than any other sleep I've had. And most of the time... That prayer isn't even, it's just asking him to take care of people that are coming against God in America. But man, does it make my day better. Walk in and listen to the Holy Spirit. Move in the gifts. Pray in the Spirit. Listen to the person of the Holy Spirit and follow him. He will tell you what to say and what not to say, what to hear and what not to hear. Stay in the pack. I can't emphasize this enough. I need you. I'm one man, and that's all I am as a man. And I'll never make a giant difference. But together, we can change a world. It's not based on one man, it's based on us. How do I know that? Because God put you here, Christina, for such a time as this. He placed you in this moment in time and all you've been through. He has given you so much gifts and time. Oh my God, my God. Yay. Sometimes I feel like that there are a whole bunch of Peters in the room that literally are called of God to be anointed to take the church forward in these last days. And God is saying, now strengthen yourself. If you don't like that televangelist, turn the channel. Don't call 17 people and tell how awful he is. We are not benefiting. We are not benefiting the body of Christ attacking each other. We're becoming easy prey for Satan. If we don't bond together. I got to go. I got to go. Man, I've preached forever, hadn't I? It's all right. Y'all haven't got to hear me for a long time, for a while. Stay in the pack. It's harder to be easy prey when you're surrounded by the strong. If you want an example of that, take a coal out of the fire and lay it to the side and watch it die. Put it back in the fire and watch it come back to life. Jesus said to Peter, you're coming back. It's going to be okay. And I could preach right there too about not walking in guilt. About your mistakes. Moving on. Number five. Don't slack on what God said to do. His commandments, giving, loving people, forgiving, being kind, tithing, communion. He literally said, he gives us a list of things. 
And he said, my people have become easy prey because they're so passionate. But they've lost the focus of the passion. And if they will just get back to me, and this is my final verse. If my people who are called by my name will humble themselves and pray and seek for the destruction of a political party or seek for the destruction of a minister or a... If my people which are called by my name, will humble themselves and pray and seek my face. Then will I hear from heaven, I will answer, and I will heal their land. You see, there's so many good causes going on out there, but they contradict God's word. And I'm not telling you they're bad causes. I'm just telling you that they contradict God's word. And when we get our focus back, all of a sudden this armor begins to rise up and this shield begins to come around us and that anointing that God's given us and that power and that authority and everything that he has honored and blessed and trusted us with begins to rise up inside of us and all of a sudden we don't start following every little dark path along the way. We begin to say, no, he's going to light my path and if it doesn't line up, if all of a sudden I just need to pray more, for Holy Spirit, I need to hear your voice. And all of a sudden, you know what happens? That calling that he's placed on your life begins to rise up. And your family members begin to come to Christ. And your neighbors begin to come to Christ. And your health begins to change. And all of a sudden, everything, that fear becomes faith. You say, does that mean the enemy won't come? Not at all. It just means you're not going to be the easy prey for him. This morning, God told me to come and tell you, don't be easy prey. You're too good for that. You're too strong for that. You're too anointed for that. You're too much of a calling on your life for that. You've been placed in a perfect time as Esther was for such a time as this. You, you. And if the enemy tells you different, he's a liar because that does not line up with what God's word says about you. Give him praise in the house. We are not weak unless we open the door. We are strong. We are anointed. We are powerful. We are men and women of God. You are daughters of Zion. Men, princes and princesses of God. It's time we become, but we're going to have to let go of things of the world. Because that's what he said of Peter. He got too caught up in those things and not enough in these things. You want more Holy Spirit power? Follow his word more and get in your prayer life more. Begin to do what he told you to do and watch what he'll do in your life. Stand with me. If you're online, this message was for you. Thank you for watching. We love you. Uh, we're going to sign off now. If you need prayer, call the church. Call me or Miss Wendy. We would love to pray with you. We are here. Message us whatever it is. We're going to sign off now. Micah, that means turn it off. I'm going to ask.